In the previous video, we learned about the basics of neural networks. Now it's time to put them into practice. We're going to adapt the logistic regression tensorflow code into a single hidden layer of neurons. Then we'll learn the idea behind backpropagation to compute the weights, that is, train, the net. Finally, you'll train your first true neural network in TensorFlow. The TensorFlow code for this video should look familiar. It's just a slightly evolved version of the logistic regression code. Let's look through how to add a hidden layer of neurons that will compute nonlinear combinations of our input pixels. You should start with a fresh Python session. Execute the code to read in and set up the data as in the logistic model. It's the same code, just copied to the new file. It's totally normal to pause, go back to that section, and remind yourself what that code does. Everything up to the variable num hidden will get you up to speed. First, let's specify how many neurons we want with num hidden equals 128. This is essentially how many nonlinear combinations will get passed to logistic regression in the end. To accommodate this, we also need to update the shape of the W1 and B weight tensors. They're now feeding into our hidden neurons, so they need to match shape. The way we compute the activation function of the weighted sum is with this single H1 line. This says to multiply our input pixels by their respective weights for each neuron, add the neuron bias term, and finally put this through the sigmoid activation function. At this point, we have 128 intermediate values. Now, it's just your friend logistic regression again. You already know what to do. These newly computed 128 features need their own set of weights and biases to compute a score on the output class. That's W2 and B2, respectively. Note how the shape matches the shape of the neurons, 128, and the number of output classes, 5. In all these weights, you probably saw that we initialized them with this strange truncated normal call. With neural networks, we want to get a good spread of initial values so our weights can climb to meaningful values, rather than just getting zeroed out. Truncated normal pulls random values from a normal distribution with the given standard deviation, a research standard scaled to the number of inputs, but throws out values that are too extreme, hence the truncation part of this. With our weights and neurons all defined, we set up the final softmax model just as we did before except we need to take care to use our 128 neurons as the input, H1, and the associated weights and biases, W2 and B2. The key to training the weights of a neural network and many other machine learning models is called backpropagation. A full derivation is beyond the scope of this series, but let's go through it intuitively. When you train a model like logistic regression, an error in your training set directly comes from poorly chosen weights. You can see which weights should be adjusted by how much and change them accordingly. Formally, TensorFlow does this by computing the derivative of the error with respect to the weight and adjusting the weight a fraction of this. Backpropagation is really an extension of the same process. You start at the bottom, output or cost function, layer, computing derivatives, and use those to compute associated derivatives with neurons one layer up. We can compute the appropriate partial derivative of the cost with respect to the weight we want to adjust by adding up the product of the derivatives on the path from the cost up to the weight. The formula here just spells out what the red arrows show. If this seems complicated, don't worry. TensorFlow handles it for you behind the scenes with the optimizer. Because we carefully specified our model, using TensorFlow to train is almost exactly the same as before. So we're going to use the same code right here. One thing to note is that because we have these hidden neurons, there are many more weights to fit the model. This means that our model will take longer to run, and that it has to take more iterations to train. Let's run it through 5,000 epochs this time. This model will probably take longer than the last one, maybe four times as long, so you can expect a few minutes to ten minutes, depending on your computer. With the model training now, we'll save checking out the accuracy for later. In this video, we built and trained a neural network in TensorFlow, 
you're now on the cutting edge of machine learning. In the next video, we'll take a close look at the model we just trained.